Hi everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today we're talking about INFJ men and INFJ women. And what I've come to realize about these two types, these two gender related uh, differences are that they are often resting on culture and stereotypes prevalent in our society. INFJ women have different expectations on them depending on where in the world they are born in and where they grow up. Some INFJs, uh, some women are going to be associated with certain interests in certain parts of the world and different in other parts of the world and these ideas are often constantly changing and in flux. That means what I'm gonna say is general, not specific. It might not be true to all of you, but it should be true to most of you. And what I've learned is that the INFJ rests on the middle point of the masculine and the feminine norms of society. Men have, uh, NFs have very feminine values and very feminine needs. The need for creativity, for intuition and for feeling is often associated with being womanly and intuitives are often more Women are often more associated with being intuitive than men. Men are associated with being direct, concrete and realistic. Women with being imaginative, flighty and crazy. So as an NF man you're always gonna be uh, touching upon values and expectations that people don't expect you to have. Your values are gonna surprise people and people are gonna be like wow you want that? Are you sure? And uh, it's worse also in the sense that when you are being an NF as a man a lot of people are still assuming that you are a sensor or a thinker. When male INFJs or NFs that overall speak they are still assumed to be sensors and thinkers by their audience. When we speak about speculative imaginative projects people still take us or what we say to be something real and something concrete and something tangible. That creates this really strange misunderstanding but also an opportunity to kind of speak to an audience that normally wouldn't get you. Now what I've noticed beyond this is that the temperament of the INFJ is very masculine. Being a leader type, an introverted and judging type, that's typically predominantly very masculine in its portrayal. An introvert sees themselves and their inner world as more important than the outer world. The introvert does not consider as much what other people say as what they are thinking inside. The introverted judging type is goal oriented and is able to set aside what they feel and to focus on achieving long-term emotional goals rather than short-term emotional goals. We can hold back our feelings and pretend not to feel if necessary. Now, that means that an INFJ is a person that tra traditionally has feminine values but a masculine temperament. Men and women of the INFJ personality type sail between both of these extremes, being at the same time the most feminine and at the same time the most masculine of all the personality types. And um, for INFJ men and women that's gonna hit a little differently. What I notice is that women are traditionally the most intuitive and the most feely of the INFJs. The INFJ women are more intuitive than the INFJ men. And the INFJ women are also more feeling than the INFJ men. And that's a general thing that I've noticed. That INFJ women are more confident sharing their ideas and their imagination. And a lot more imaginative and able to consider and to go a little deeper than men there. They're also able to see more nuance and to see deeper qualities than INFJ men tend to do. Beyond this, INFJ men are often more inclined towards being strongly introverted or strongly judging. They enhance and pull more on their introverted or their judging personality traits. And that makes uh, INFJ men more likely to pull on the 5 and the 4, where INFJ women are more likely to pull on the 9 or the social or sexual orientations in the Enneagram. Now, what I'm starting to find here 
is also that INFJ men are a lot more rough in their intuition and their feeling. Where INFJ women are a lot more, in a way, elegant in their use of intuition and feeling. More elaborate, more ornamental, more deep, more careful in how they express it. More careful in how they use this power. INFJ women think more about their feeling and their expression and how they impact other people. INFJ women think more about the use of and the pursuit of intuition and of feeling. That also gives them more restraint and the assurance in not using it for manipulative or controlling or selfish motives. It's that INFJ women are more careful in this regard. Where I find that INFJ men are more likely to use intuition and feeling in ways that are a little sloppy or a little too much or a little overbearing or a little too rough. Uh, when we speak and when we predict and when we talk, we put less conscientiousness into it. We put less openness to it. We are more close-minded to some extent than we are more we are more sloppy with it. We are, however, more decisive and we are more steady than the women in general. We are usually calmer than the women. The INFJ women are a lot more prone to anxiety what I, from what I've noticed. And the INFJ women are also more prone to stress in a sense that uh, they often take on a little more than they can handle and they often become more overwhelmed by their partners and their friends and the people around them than the INFJ man that is more often careful with uh, putting on or taking on too much or more than they can handle. Now if you're an INFJ 9 or an INFJ uh, or is with a social or a sexual orientation uh, you might not relate to what I'm saying here as an INFJ man but as I said it's predominantly that men will pull more on the introverted and the judging traits because we are more allowed to do so in society. We are more expected to do so. We are more expected to take the leader role or the role of the self-directed autonomous explorer where women are more expected to take on the nurturing role or the role of the imaginative, intuitive. Now what I'm also finding is that it's more difficult for INFJ women to be taken seriously. Like I said, INFJ men tend to be seen as ISTJs or sensing and thinking types by society. They tend to be misunderstood as such. They tend to be seen as more sensory or more thinking than they are. And uh, that allows us to pass through in environments where an INFJ woman might not have as easy of a time getting their voice heard. That means INFJ women struggle to feel heard when they are communicating themselves, when they are sharing their ideas and when they share their intuition. When an INFJ woman is sharing a prediction or an idea of the future or a vision, other people might say, oh, that's crazy. How can you even think or consider that? When an INFJ man says it, it's often that society goes, oh, yeah, but that's reality, right? That's that's already happened. Or they, they, they think it as if it was some kind of uh, predestined prophecy, in a sense. However, a lot of... Uh, People can also come to harbor a great respect, more respect even, for INFJ women, seeing them as, if you really like intuition, if you really love it, if you really see it as a source, INFJ women are more likely to be seen as muses, in a sense, being seen as givers of energy and of power and of purpose. It's uh, like INFJ women are associated with giving people energy, passion and purpose, where INFJ men are seen as pillars to rest your head upon, pillars to lean against. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't even want to go into what I think is better or what I think is worse. I think both have a lot to learn to find balance, and I think both should be exploring each other's sides. Uh, I think as an INFJ man you can benefit greatly from exploring the feminine inside of you and as an INFJ woman you can explore um, you can benefit a lot from exploring the manly traits or the masculine traits inside of you. When Carl Jung spoke of the anima and the animus he said that we can see this in levels 
and uh, sometimes we can regard the uh, masculine parts of ourselves as almost primitive or tarzan like or we can overvalue it as being some amazing power symbol or some great symbol of status where if you take the feminine at its worst we can see it as weak and victim like and uh, as something that holds no value or that is uh, defenseless or that can't stand up for itself but we can also see the highest feminine the hyper overvaluated feminine and uh, Regardless, it's worth taking a look at what you see and how you see femininity and how you see masculinity. If you, for example, have a tendency to see masculinity as dangerous or violent, that can inhibit your ability to express your own masculinity in yourself. And if you see femininity as weak and uh, as something defenseless, that can prevent you from being vulnerable and to sharing with yourself and sharing things inside of you that you are scared of or that you are troubled with. What I'm finding is it's more difficult for INFJ men to be vulnerable than for INFJ women. But what I'm also finding is that INFJ women struggle a lot more to take a position in a group and to take a steady role or to take charge in a group when necessary. And what I'm finding is that INFJ women that learn to do so can become extremely empowered through doing so. INFJ women can make excellent leaders. I've seen and met a lot of INFJ women that manage these smaller social atmospheres, interest groups for social projects and activism. I've seen INFJ women manage reading circles and HSP groups and I've seen INFJ women that uh, are naturally in touch with their leader qualities. And uh, I think uh, that's a sign of reaching that state of balance if you as a 9FJ woman struggles with struggle with these pursuits. And I have also met INFJ men that have learned to become more in touch with their intuition and to be more vulnerable. Uh, even if at some point that required them to be a little less leader-like or even if that had led them to be a little less steady or made them a little less trustworthy or made them seem a little less uh, strong or determined. Yeah, uh, it's all about realizing you know, that you don't always have to be that way. You don't have to force yourself into a persona or into a role that doesn't fit you. Take a look at what doesn't fit you. Write down a list of the things that you do that doesn't fit you. That doesn't fit with what you want and with what you need. And learn that the INFJ is your flow type. It's your code to success, to magic, to energy, to passion and to freedom from stress and from limiting beliefs. So if you become more in touch with yourself as an INFJ, that can only lead to great success. And that's why you should be taking a look at masculine and feminine norms. And that's also why you should get my INFJ handbook when it's out there on the market. I still have some time left to finish it though, so hang in there.